everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. Come and eat. Why are you here? Why are you keeping the Sabbath? Why are you getting ready for the fall feast days? And getting ready, making reservations for Sukkot? Why? There's only one acceptable answer. There's a lot of answers that people give. And some of them are good answers. But there's really one underlying bottom line issue and it ties in with what you were saying that Solomon did not ask for. Does anybody does anybody want to take a guess? And I won't put anybody down. I'm thinking of one thing in my mind. And and I think once I tell you you'll, you'll all agree with it. But does anybody want to guess what they why we do what we do? Why? I really want Yah's heart. What Yah wants me to do? I want to follow. I want to obey. Yes. Uh, okay. Really Why do you want to obey him? Because I love him. Bingo. Kumiko nailed it on the head. It's out of love because I love him. Yes, we want to obey him. Yes. You know, we owe him the praise and the worship and, you know, get it. or, well, the Bible says to do it or, you know, but a lot of people do a lot of things for the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. Oh, the, the Pharisees were righteous beyond belief. I mean, they tithed every little thing and they had levels of righteousness. And Yeshua said, but he says, your righteousness must exceed that of the Pharisees. What is that? Matthew 5, 20? I'm guessing. I think it's 920. How does our righteousness exceed that of the Pharisees? He also said of them, because I mean they they had the they had it down to a T, these obedience issues. But he also told them, you draw near with your mouth, your lips, but your hearts are far from me. Because they were many of them, I'm not saying all, but many of them were doing it for the wrong reasons, for money, for power for prestige, for the praises of men, for people to look at them when they prayed or when they, they had tzitzit that they were longer than the next guys or whatever, or they had a long beard that drug on the floor or whatever. Those are the wrong reasons. It's got to be because out of a heart, because we love Him. If we do not love Him, then we are doing it all for the wrong reasons. And if we don't love Him like we should, and none of us do, we need to be growing in our love. The, 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 the church at Ephesus was, they had lost their first love. And Yeshua rebuked them and said, I'm going to take your candle out of the menorah. You're, going to, you're not going to be part of me if you don't give back to it. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. It's all out of love. Just because he is so beautiful and so wonderful, and because what he did and who he is, even if it wasn't for what he did, even if he didn't die for our sins, and I've said this before, and there was no eternal life, but the fact that I walk out in my garden and I look at the flowers, like I did this morning, and I put up a bunch of pictures on my blog, and if you see that, probably not. I put it up right before I came. And the flowers, I, I looked at each flower, and I have about 10 pictures of flowers that are blooming in my garden right now. And I looked at each flower, and I, I looked at it, and I said, what are, you, what are you preaching, flower? What are you preaching to me? And after each flower, I described the flower, and, and I said, and then I turned it into a prayer. This is what this flower is teaching us. Y'all help us to be this way. Help us to be, I did that nine times, or whatever, however many, eight or nine, what, ten, whatever, however many flowers I have. He's looking it up on his phone right there. You see, I, I walk in the garden and I see the flowers. And I go like, if it weren't, if there was no eternal life, I look at the beauty. And I go like, 
I owe him my reverence, my prayers, my joy, my worship because of this flower or the birds or the sky or the trees or, or the running waters. If there was no afterlife, I would still owe it to him because of how beautiful he is and what he has given us to live this life in, under his blessings. And we are the fall feast days. This is a time to prepare our hearts for Yeshua, who's coming back as our glorious bridegroom. It's time to move. We are moving, and I taught about this recently, through the tabernacle, from the altar, from the menorah, which represents Pentecost, over to the Shulchan HaPanaim, the table of presence into his face. It's showbread table. That's a bad translation. But the, it means a table of his presence where the tribes of Israel are gathered together in his presence. And together as a group, they all move to the altar of incense before the parochet, the veil that separates heaven from earth, the throne room of heaven, moving into the Holy of Holies. You're looking at the pictures? <laughs> Primroses. Yeah, there you go. Um, and and we are, you know, from Yom Teruah, which represents, or the, the Day of Trumpets, which represents the, the table of showbread, or which the table of showbread represents. Then we move to Yom Kippur, the, the, the altar of incense, which represents our praise and our worship, and coming into the presence of the throne room of Elohim, into the presence of Yeshua with worship and praise, sacrifice of praise with hearts full of adoration. That's preparing to meet our bridegroom, which we are going to marry if we are faithful and true to Him to the very end. And that's coming into His presence, the New Jerusalem. And that's where we're at right now. I pray continually, Lord, circumcise my heart, remove the barriers, the things that keep me from You in this life or whatever, and help me to love You more. Because that is the strength that will carry us on through the floods and the fires, the valley of the shadow of death, through everything. Your houses could burn down. You could be like Habakkuk, lose everything, or like Job. But he says, I know that my Redeemer liveth, and Job, Job's wife and his evil friends could not get him to sin with his mouth because he took, took his... He had some self-righteousness issues. We know that. But he, he didn't take his eyes off of Jehovah, and he, Jehovah blessed him for it. So as we are in this 40 days of Teshuvah, the month of Elul, we need to ask ourselves, how much do I love Yeshua? Because out of that comes everything else, all the obedience. And that is the message of the apostles. That is the message of the apostles. They weren't beating people over the head with the Bible, with the Torah scroll. Boom, boom, boom. Do this and do that. Do this, do that. And that's what a lot of people do. They take their Torah scrolls and they beat people over the head with it. <clears throat> you got to do this, and if you don't do this the right way, you're out of here. I have nothing to do with you. No, they preached Yeshua. They preached the redeemed life. They preached turning away from sin, coming out of the world, and loving Him with all of your heart, soul, mind, strength, and your neighbor as yourself. And how do you do that? Let me explain to you the beautiful ways of Torah. It will bring life and joy and abundance and through walking him in His ways and obeying Him, it takes you into His kingdom and eternal life. There is no formula for salvation. If there's a formula for salvation, it's this. Love Him. If you love Him, you're going to repent of your sins. If you love Him, you're going to obey Him. If you love Him, you're going to be worshiping Him. You're going to be treating your neighbor right. You're going to be doing the Torah. That's it. That's it. And that's what these feasts are all about. And that's what the fall feasts are all about. Preparing ourselves. And yes, the rigors of life take their toll. Just like in a marriage, there's times when you're madly in love with your wife or your husband. There's other times when you, you know, you're very frustrated and things aren't as hot. But you still love them. Look, l love is a deep thing. There's times when my wife just drives me crazy. And I don't want to be in the room with her. But I have that deep love for her that will not ever go away. And I don't want to do anything to hurt her. So instead of lashing out at her, I walk away. And I pray. And 
I you know, ask you all for wisdom and guidance. I don't want to hurt her. We don't want to hurt Yeshua, who gave his life for us and bought us with his blood. So Yah, and I pray, help me to love you more. Help me to love you more. Help me to love my wife with your love, even when my love isn't sufficient, when my love doesn't want to love her. Help me to love her with your love. And I've prayed that many, many times, so that even when she's driving me crazy and I want to go, go to the opposite end of the earth, but I still, in my heart, I still have that deep love for her. It's his love that I can't do that. I can't. I can't do anything to hurt her. And my children and other people, too. It just goes out from there. You like that, Toshio? Hallelujah. That's what this is all about. Anybody want to add to that? What's your, what are your thoughts? Thank you. That's what sustains me. That's what sustained me for 18 years pastoring a congregation. I got getting spit on, knifed, bludgeoned, beat up, abused, taken advantage of, knowing the fellowship of his sufferings. And, that's, and also blessed by a few people along the way, too, like you guys. But every pastor goes through it. That's what sustained me. There was, I didn't take any money. Didn't get a lot of, you know, didn't get anything really in this physical life. I gained a lot of wisdom and understanding, but it was the love of Yeshua. And that's what will sustain us through everything. Sustain us through the t troubles with our marriages, troubles in our finances, troubles with raising children, going through teenagers troubles with our workplace, with our family members, tr trials, sicknesses, whatever. It's the love of Yeshua. I'm, I'm telling you, and you know this, Jesus, Yeshua, is the answer to everything. Every problem on the face of the earth, I don't care if it's political, religious, economic, death, disease, every problem, emotional, psychological, human relations, jobs, Yeshua is the answer to everything. It's really that simple. I just tell people this when, when I talk to clients of mine and we're talking about world, I just tell them, the answer is Jesus, Yeshua. It's it. That's the answer. To every problem. The answer to the, the the North Korea problem, to the China problem, to the the, the national debt problem, to the this virus or this mosquito or or to racial tensions in this country or to the the you know the spirit of antichrist coming out of the middle east or whatever the answer is yeshua mm -hmm. global warming pollution i don't care global cold cooling whatever whichever one you want to believe yeshua is the answer it's that simple when you really know who he is he's the answer to the foolish mind, to the carnal mind, that seems like a ridiculous answer. But then, of course, the message of the cross is foolishness to, foolishness to those who are perishing. Mm -hmm. But to those who know and who are not perishing, we know otherwise. Hallelujah. Amen.
Lord while he may be found. Call upon his name. He is near. He is near. Yeshua Hashem Behimatzot. 